Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you what the filter is straight away. It's not going to be any messing about. This is the HW3000 from Sun Sun. And as you can see, it's got a digital readout there on the top. We'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, I'll just show you the outputs. Well, that one is the output. It's a little bit like the FX6 outflow in that you can have two um, duckbill attachments on here firing out different places in the tank or you can have the duckbill and the spray bar here I've only got a little tank so this is just a small part of the spray bar you could have the duckbill firing this way and a spray bar right across the back now this dial on the top of that outlet is important and I'll get to that further in the video this is a really good feature and it kind of negates one of the other features of this particular filter fittings are generally good pipe is roughly an inch internal diameter I think so it's a nice big pipe you get a good amount of flow through it um, all in all it, the quality of fittings is really really good for a budget filter and that translates to the intake as well we've got the normal sort of screened intake on the bottom there adjustable length pipe and that goes out drops down and into the filter and talking of the filter we've got the normal sort of setup we've got an in pipe and an out pipe obviously it goes through all the trays and everything which i'll show you in a moment we've got the release mechanism we've got individual taps for the in and the out and that's good because it makes it really easy to prime you just fill this thing up turn this to off turn this one to on then you unscrew this you fill the pipe up with water with the jug till it's right up screw the top back on you come down here you open that one up water levels itself out then draws water down from the intake just through gravity to fill up whatever remaining space you've got in the filter pump goes on and it's instantly primed although you do get a few air bubbles in it's probably a few in now we'll just tip it to one side Go. You can just hear the air bubbles being spat out. So you've got to rock it around a little bit to get all the air bubbles out, but it runs more or less silently. You know, for a filter of this size, it doesn't make much noise. So I'll just explain what this is showing. This is the digital readout. Now that shows that the impeller is going round. That shows that the power of the thing is six out of six, so it's on maximum output. If we hold this. That goes to unlocked, and then if we hold it again, that flashes. These are up and down arrows, so if we want to reduce the output, we simply turn it down. You hear the pump slowing down? Turn it back up, you'll hear the pump speeding up. There you go, back to full power. And that's it once it's stopped flashing it's set so it's set now at full power in a similar way we've got the UV light which is in here controllable by a button here so press that that goes to unlock press it again and you see that flashing so presently it's not on at all we can use that to put it on at two hours per day four hours per day eight 16 or 24 so it's on 24 it's on permanently and you can knock it down as well okay before I take this to bits just a quick note on this particular attachment as I said before this feature kind of negates something else and that something else is what I've just been talking about that electronic flow adjuster if I loosen that which way I can then turn the dial at the top and that reduces the flow coming out of here obviously I've got it switched off at the moment so you cannot see it but that does the same job as the electronic flow adjuster except this only constricts the flow it doesn't actually slow the pump down so if you just use this and you have the filter pumping at six, which is full output, even though you wouldn't get full output from there if you turn this down, 
you'd still be using the full electric. So you'd still be consuming full power. If you control it at the electronic switch on the filter, you will consume less power. So whilst on the face of it, this does the same job as the actual digital readout. It doesn't. It's just an easy way to adjust it, to fine tune it, should I say. This is like fine tuning it. The electronic adjustment is to actually set the flow. Okay, so there we've got the top off. And under here, you'll notice it's got a UV light. So the water comes down around the outside of the UV. So it passes over this light, which kills the algae and so on. It then goes down to the bottom of the filter, rises up through the trays gets sucked up here in the pump and it gets spat back out to the tank. That's pretty much all I need to show you on there. It's a pretty standard top, although it does have a very thick rubber seal around there, which is a nice feature. Okay, so onto the trays. We've got four nice big trays and it's got the hole there for the UV to sit inside. That is spiraled so the water instead of just going straight down and shooting over the light it actually swirls around and that increases the amount of time that the light actually shines on the water that's heading down here that's good because it makes the uv light a little bit more efficient so as it shines out it's doing more of a job in the trays all we have is a piece of fine pad and that just sits in every one of these trays. So we've got four pieces of fine pad and nothing else, which is really good because we're not paying for unnecessary crap that we're just gonna throw away. We can use the money we've saved to set this thing up properly. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. Okay, so we've got this set up now very, very simply. We've got some spare white pads. We only need one white pad and that one is on the bottom tray. Remember the water comes down over the UV into the bottom of the filter and rises up through the trays. So in this one, we've got a coarse pad, medium pad and a fine pad. That keeps all of the mechanical filtration in the bottom of the filter. So all the muck is gonna be retained in the very bottom of the filter. After that, we've got three full trays of media. I'll just take that off and let you have a look. That might look a different color to what we normally use in these filter demonstrations. But because the guy that sent me this, who was called Drew, um, actually thank you Drew for sending me this filter. I don't think I've thanked you yet, but, and also thank you for letting me run the filter. I've had it running for three weeks. It's ran without fault. It's pretty quiet. It seems to be a very good filter. Um, yeah, I like it. Anyway, this is Bio Home Ultimate Marine, because Drew is actually going to be using this filter on a marine tank. So in each one of these three big media trays, we've got approximately 1.8 kilos of Bio Home Ultimate Marine. Obviously it'll fit the same amount of the freshwater version of this, which is the orangey one. So three of those added together gives us mm, well over five kilos of media, which is over 11 pounds for you guys in the US. No fine pad on the top. That is important. I see people setting filters up with a fine pad as the so-called polishing pad, as the very last thing water hits. All that does, it concentrates fine muck in all of your trays, clogs your media, no matter what sort of media you're using, clogs it up, makes it just a horrible mess. So if there's any fine particles that get through that bottom tray, just allow them through this. They will be caught a second time round. Keep the media clean and keep it effective. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. That's it. Give it a bit of a wiggle until you can feel the tray lock into position. That way you know that they all fit together perfectly. That goes on the top. Top goes back on. <laughs> no, 
now there is a certain way to get these in i've put these in the wrong way it needed to be that way so i'm gonna have to restack these that's the fella okay Hopefully this goes on properly now. Yep, that's good. One, two, three, four. There we go. All done. Okay, here's just a few details on the flow rates. So at the one power, the pump only consumes 10 watts, pumps 1200 litres an hour, and it steps up all the way to 3000 litres per hour only consuming 30 watts and the UV is 9 watts so that's you know what oh god I mean that's enough for nearly a thousand litres you know there's a little visual demonstration of where the water comes in over the UV light into the bottom of the filter up through the trays back out to the tank it's got reasonably comprehensive instructions there it tells you what you could put in the filter none of which is very accurate but at least it gives you some indication of what you could do with it because as i say it only comes with four pieces of fine pad that's not really enough for any sort of tank you will need to upgrade it somehow oh i forgot to mention as well in the video because i didn't have it set up with this this is actually a surface skimmer so you can attach that to your intake pipe so it sucks from the tank from you know midway down the tank or the bottom of your tank and it also sucks from the top and that'll remove any oils any dust any muck bubbles that might end up on the water surface so there you go that's a pretty big filter for a pretty big tank i mean we've got over five kilos of media in here that'll make it suitable if you want to see a full cycle which is zero ammonia zero nitrite and low nitrate for approximately 500 liters or 130 us gallons or thereabouts and as far as the output goes as i say it does everything from 1200 liters an hour to 3000 liters an hour 3000 liters an hour is approximately 780 us gallons so it is a bit of a powerhouse it's well made it seems pretty efficient as well um, it's just a nice simply laid out filter you don't really need this digital part of it but it's nice to have if you want to reduce the flow say you put this on your tank and you've got a lot of media you know because you've got quite a big tank but you've got something like discus which don't like a lot of flow you can knock the flow down you can still get the efficiency of your filter without the flow and without the running costs as well because if you knock it down to 1200 liters an hour and you've just got the water going passively through it or more slowly through it anyway it's only 10 watts i mean in the uk that's going to cost you like 12 pounds a year to run and in the us it's probably less because your electric costs are way lower than ours so all in all good filter i'll put the link to it in the video description i'm not sure it's available in the uk yet if it is i'll put the link if you guys can find it and i haven't put the link let me know and i will put the link in there thanks for watching see you next time